We've seen, haven't we, that God will obliterate sin by defeating Satan and crushing all of his enemies. How can God be kind to us then in his victory? Because we sin, don't we? Verse nine. By this then, Jacob's guilt will be uh, atoned for. And this will be the full fruit of the removal of his sin. When he makes all the altar stones to be like limestone crushed to pieces, no Asherah poles or incense altars will be left standing. By this, Jacob's guilt will be atoned for. By what? What's this? Well, by God's kindness, by his word, by Jesus himself on the cross. Yes, we are sinners, but by grace through faith, our sins have been paid for by Jesus's atoning death on the cross. He's taken the penalty due to us upon himself, hasn't he? Praise God. <laughs> That's where his kindness and his victory meet, isn't it? It is finished, he cried. He's defeated sin by taking it upon himself, taking it to the cross and taking his father's just and right punishment for us. And he's kind, isn't he? Because he took that instead of us. Kind doesn't even get there, does it? He's just unimaginably super kind. And it was at the cross that Satan's defeat was absolutely and totally secured as well. Hallelujah. What a saviour. And the fruit of our lives, the fruit that we bear as we hold on to God's word, as we hold on to Jesus. Well, we become idol smashers in our own lives. We turn away from trusting in anything else and bit by bit through the power of the word working in our lives, we desecrate our idols, just like the faithful uh, people of Judah smashed up the objects of worship uh, of other so-called gods, the altars and the Asherah poles. Uh, over time, by God working in us, by his word, we line ourselves up more and more with him because we see what Jesus has done for us on the cross. We see it more and more clearly as we, as we meditate on his word, as we look to Jesus himself. We see clearly his victory over sin, over our sin, and his kindness to us by paying for our rebellion by his death. He died so that we can live. And we therefore put to death our old way of life, don't we? Our, our living for ourselves or our living for anything other than Jesus. Bit by bit, we smash it up. And we do it by soaking ourselves in the water of his word. So don't be afraid, but trust in God's word by looking to the cross. So as we reach the end of this series in Isaiah 13 through to 27, Let's be people who don't fear when enemies snipe at the church, who don't fear when the world around us is in uproar and rebellion against God. But let's be people who soak ourselves in the watering of God's word and who lob hand grenades of scripture against our defeated enemy, Satan. Let's be people of the word, entrusting ourselves to our kind and victorious King Jesus. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you that you are kind and that you're victorious. Thank you that you are uh, victorious over our enemies, over our own sin, that you are kind to us in sending the Lord Jesus to take the punishment for our sin upon himself. And so we pray that as we uh, live our lives now in the light of your of your final victory over Satan, that we wouldn't fear, but we would trust in your word, clinging on to the Lord Jesus, and so bearing that fruit of smashing up our own idols. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>